Okay, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and recently I showed my contrast checker action for the Digital Photography School article. Now, the contrast checker is awesome, but it only works in Photoshop. So those of you who are using Lightroom or uh, for what I'm gonna be showing for all intents and purposes is Camera Raw because I really don't use Lightroom, you can do the same thing in Lightroom. It's just gonna take a couple extra steps. So first of all, let me just go ahead and show you what the contrast checker is in Photoshop, and then show you some things about what it's doing. And then we'll go into Camera Raw and I'll show you how to do the same thing in Camera Raw. So this contrast checker action is also in my latest The Color Zone System uh, action that also has a tutorial video series to go along with it. So I'm going to press play on contrast checker and what you're going to notice right away is it turns your image into black and white. And that's exactly what we want to do here because right now looking at this photograph there is no depth or the depth is very very limited. And the reason why I say the depth is very limited is when we look at this, there's no true black and there's no real true white. Our eye just kind of gets stuck in this 50% gray sea of monotone boringness. All right. And the Kansas City skyline is not monotone boringness. I love this skyline. So with this contrast checker, it's taking your photograph and making a gradient map of it. Now there's many different ways to take a photo and make it black and white, but this one is taking a gradient map of it. And I want you to see what happens when we put our color wheel on when we have a gradient map. You see what it's doing here is it's taking our darkest colors and it's making them the darkest tone and going so on and so forth with all the other tones. You can see how they transition. This is, to me, this is the best form of black and white conversion. It's a gradient map with black and white. Now watch what happens when we were to do just like desaturate. And that's with the hue saturation and I drop the saturation all the way down. Sure, it makes a black and white image, but look what it does to all the colors. Pretty much turns all the predominant colors, the primary colors, in their purest form into 50% gray. Whereas the gradient map doesn't do that. Now, the reason why I showed you that is because we're going to be going into camera roll and desaturating the image. I want you to know that there's a difference between reducing the saturation in Photoshop and reducing the saturation in Camera Raw. Okay? So how this contrast checker works now is you go into the curves adjustment layer that is there for the contrast checker, you press Alt or Option on your uh, little sliders here and you can see if you have any clipping in the black areas. So on this one I don't have any clipping in the black areas. So I'm going to move that over until something turns black. and that's basically going to give me a set point for black. There should be some black somewhere in the photo and there should be some white somewhere in the photo. Don't be afraid of getting clipped or blown highlights. Oh, you know, man, oh man, we can't do that. that that's something that you hear all the time. Don't clip your highlights, don't clip your shadows. But I'm going to say is that clipping them will help give depth. Now, you don't want to clip them to the point that you're like this because then you've blown out that photograph. That's not good. You want to clip them to the point that you just add a little bit of white in areas that should have those areas of white and the same thing with the blacks. Clip the blacks until you have a little bit of black showing up in areas where black should be like in these buildings. So already right there that has made a better photograph. It's already added more depth. Now with this contrast checker we can take it further because there's some areas in here that I want to be a little bit lighter so I'll grab this area with my targeted adjustment tool and just kind of bring it up make that lighter but maybe I want this tree to be a little bit darker. Let's say this grass area just to be a little bit darker. Maybe this grass area to be a little bit lighter. So there, I've added some more depth as well. So then if we take off our gradient map, we now have the curves adjustment layer on our photo. See that? Huge difference. We now have a lot of depth. We have better color. It just looks beautiful. Now if you want, you can change this to luminosity so it doesn't affect the color. It only affects the tone. So that's all fine and well. That's really easy to do in Photoshop. But now let's look at Camera Raw because Camera Raw and Lightroom are very similar. So you can do the same thing there. So I'm going to do is I'm going to open both of these up in Camera Raw. I'm in Bridge right now. I navigated to those photos. They're both TIFF images. So I'm going to open Camera Raw. So now when I open in Camera Raw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the saturation all the way down. Now I'm also going to go to this and show you what happens when I drop the saturation all the way down. It's not necessarily a bad black and white photograph, but it's not a 50% gray photograph like we saw in the Photoshop version, right? All right, that's just pretty much what I wanted to show you there, is that the saturation drop is different in Camera Raw as it is in Photoshop. Now, I wish I could tell you the reason why, but I don't know, so I'm not going to go into that. Okay, so now how do you adjust the clippings in Camera Raw? How do you know what's clipping in Camera Raw? Um, 
In Camera Raw, you can press Alt or Option as you move along the shadows. And as I move along the shadows and I press Alt or Option on these, I can see where I'm clipping my blacks, where I'm clipping my whites. So that's moving along the shadows. We can make things a little bit brighter. We'll go back to shadows. Let's stick with the blacks for now. If I press Alt or Option and click on the blacks, I can move that to the left to introduce more black in areas that should be black. Same thing we did in Photoshop. Now whites. I can clip this and move it up until I get some more white in areas that I want to be white. Now you see it's a lot more forgiving, meaning you can go a lot further on this than you can on the curve. So now I can go into the shadows. And when I move the shadows, I can increase or decrease the amount of light in those shadow areas, which is slightly different than the blacks. And if I press Alt or Option, I can see where I'm adding more black into those areas. And the same thing with the highlights. Now I can also go into the curve and I can go ahead and adjust the curve as well. Let's say I want to make certain areas a little brighter, make certain areas a little bit darker, maybe give it an S curve. But then if I go back to the basic panel, I just go to the saturation and click zero. And now I've got that same depth added type photo without the uh, the pain of trying to see what it is. Now the reason why you use the contrast checker the reason why you change it to black and white is it's a lot easier to see tonal differences in a black and white photograph than it is in a color photograph. And typically if you get the tones right in black and white and then convert it back to uh, your color photograph in that non-destructive way, meaning we haven't com completely converted our photo into black and white. That's why we used an adjustment layer, a gradient map adjustment layer, because we can turn it off and it's not completely turning our photo black and white. Same thing here. I haven't done anything destructive because I'm using this saturation slider. So that is how you can use the contrast checker in a way in things like Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com. If you like this, please go ahead and comment, maybe share it. There's probably somebody else in the photo community that you know that may need this tip to help them with their photographic process. Also, if you want videos like this to be coming through your stream, go ahead and subscribe to this. Um, and if you like, I also have three books on Amazon.com if you just search my name, Blake Rudis. You'll find I have three books, Exploring HDR, and the DSLR Survival Guide, and 11 Things Every Photographer Should Know About HDR Photography. Thank you very much for watching this. I really appreciate you coming by.